Hello guys, this is Gaudens and welcome to our tutorial. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you guys how to use a depth map shadows. Alright, so, um, well, Maya uh, is not like the, like real life. Maya can um, imitate real life, but it's not like real life. What I mean by that is um, you're not restricted to shadows. You can shadow, if um, in real life the shadow is coming from the front of you, if the light is right in front of you, the shadow can go, should be at the back, behind you, that kind of thing. Or whenever there is the sun and you're walking under the sun, you have a shadow. That's just how it is. That's just how life is. But Maya is not restricted to that. You can do that if you want to, but you're not restricted to do it. So what I'm, let me show you what I mean. We've got this robot in here. Let's um, just uh, use the default light to um, see exactly what we're working with. So I've got this robot, and um, if I go ahead and just render it, if I just go ahead and render it, you'll see that there's a robot standing there but without a shadow. That's because the shadow is not has not been turned on. So, um, let's close that. To turn on shadows, we can do it in one of the two ways. We can either turn on um, we can either turn on depth map shadows or ray trace shadows. Ray trace shadows, we're gonna learn that in the next tutorial, but for this tutorial, we're gonna learn about depth map shadows. Alright? So to you, when you're in the dark, you can't see your shadow, and we 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 are in the dark right now because uh, the we there's my default light. We have to use all lights. So let's go ahead and use all lights, and let's create a spotlight. All right. When you create a spotlight, by default, it's under it's at zero zero. So just press W to move it. But as I told you guys, how I like to do how I like to work is using the manipulator too. So I like to use the manipulator too. So I'm going to cl uh, click on the manipulator too. That way I've got two objects to work with. I've got the position, all right? I've got the position where I want the light to fall onto and the light itself. So let's uh, let's bring it um, Go into your um, perspective view. Let's bring it a little bit this side. That way we can have uh, a wider, we can have a space to play with the shadow. That's pretty cool, guys. Now we don't want to see that there's light. Anyway, so we can see the um, we can see our our object there. By default, Maya has um has removed the default light now. So let's go ahead and, sh and uh, render it. We only see our light and wherever it's shining. There you go, voila. And we've got no shadow still. So um, to turn on the shadow, just uh, let's go to the light attributes. Make sure you select your light. All right. Select your light. You have your light's attributes. Select your light command A to go to your attributes. Or select your light and just click, click on that. Bang. That's it. You've got your lights. So. In this um in these attributes we've got color we've got color intensity this this that so what we want is shadows because we're dealing with shadows so let's go down part of my laptop guys it's only two gigabytes RAM so it's not good enough for my but it does the tutorials that's why I never involve myself uh. With, I never involve myself in those big as pro, big projects on my laptop because I just can't do it. It do take me two days to render <laughs> to render a scene. Oh, depth map shadows? No, no, not that far. Guys, please bear with me. I would edit uh, this out, but by the time I finish editing, I would have made another tutorial. So I have to just scroll up. All right, let me wait. So anyway, while this is, um, let me click three times, one, two, three. That way it will start going up. Anyway, so um, we've got, uh, play, uh, what what can I say what, what I want, I'm waiting for it to go up. Um, okay, make sure you're comfortable with the way you move your lights, guys, okay? Practice, move your lights, 
move them up and down left right and center practice and you you'll be um, more comfortable shadows we've got shadow color depth map shadows is what we want so if we click on depth map shadows voila there's a depth map shadow all right so there you go just bring it up that's a crisp crispy clear shadow let's uh re let's render it just for argument's sakes that's a that's a perfect shadow look at that now now um that's 512 by one all right that's 512 resolution and filter of one so what the resolution is what the res what resolution is is the clearness of the shadow and filter is the softness of the shadow all right from the, from the, from the outside going inwards all right um let me show you what i mean if we go to something as ridiculously low as uh, remember Sega Sega Genesis Sega Mega Drive or something it was 64 bits so let's say 64 all right 64 with no filter whatsoever filter of zero filters see how crappy the shadow is look at that that's that's bad that's a bad shadow but if we go ahead and um, if we go ahead and try to soften it um, fil filter it by let's say one enter well technically we filter it by one it will go a bit softer now we can't see it in here but if I go ahead and render it there you go anyway if we, if I go ahead and render it you see something bit better but let's go uh, let's go let's go ahead and just say uh, 512 again 512 and um, 512 and then render this bad boy see we've got a shadow which is crispy clear but I'm gonna show you one trick if we use um, a rendering trick called the IP, IPR okay which is this one here what IPR does it um, is um, what IPR does is it allows interactive rendering you can render stuff interactively all right let's close this window position this bad boy nicely so we can see the shadow and just click on IPR it takes a bit a little bit longer to render as compared to normal rendering but it does it's good enough so once we click on IPR look at that it's in a, in a um, rendering region okay we are selecting the rendering region we want, we're interested in the shadow so we, something like that all right something like that we'll just move this one that way so we can access our menus before I do that let me go to my light settings make sure you click on your light on your light so you can have your light um, attributes now um, how this works is if we bring this one ridiculously to 64 uh, uh, guys um, let me just have your attention if you if uh, let me just make sure you you get this okay this bit if you lower the resolution to 64 all right see what happens it will take a bit longer but it will do the work because my laptop is just crap 64 bits that's it we've got filter size of one but if we take the filter size of to zero and just um, just render this see just IPR render it see what happens this is just way too crappy all right so and again if we take it um, my rule of thumb is my rule of thumb is um, uh, how can I put it uh, low resolution plus high filter is equal to soft shadow 
What I mean by that is low resolution as low as 64 plus high filter as high as let's say 4 is equal to enter is equal to um, low shadow like soft shadow my laptop probably won't allow that but anyway look at that it's a softer shadow see that so that's perfect so and um, another thing that I want you guys to, to know is um, if we bring the resolution high as high as uh, let's say um, 2048 2048 and um, resolution uh, bring the re resolution again to let's say zero okay so remember the resolution is high and the filter is zero if we render this sorry we have to select a, a right click where you want and just um, render it see that's perfect that's perfect sorry um, that's a perfect shadow you see that now if we bring down see the filter size is zero all right zero but the resolution is 248 you would see you'd think well it might have uh, jagged edges but it doesn't have jagged edges it's because the res resolution is just way too high it's like good perfect that's how this works so we, we, we um that's pretty much how that work you can you, you can play with it you can have um, low resolution high low, if it's low resolution the filter has to be high enough to soften the, the to soften it all right but if it's high resolution if it's high resolution filter doesn't matter that much but you have to sort of jiggle around with it depending on what you're working with you know depending on um, what you're working with but my um, what I do when I'm doing uh, when I'm working on standard NTSC work I put I usually put my my resolution to 512 and my filter between 1 and 4 but usually 3 that's my advice to you that's what I, that's how I was taught that's how I do it and it works for me try it it might work for you so um and again if we click on um, IPI interactive um, rendering and uh, if we try and, and try to um, change the color of the shadow let's say if we change it to um, red just hold on if we change it to red if we change it to red and just render it render that bit remember remember we're rendering that bit that the box all right if we change it as you can see it's still black we're rendering to red it will have a red shadow so i just want you guys to know that um even even if it's unnatural but we we can do that if we want all right if we want the shadow to be um let's say gray like light grayish um like light gray you would uh do that with a little bit of red in it just go ahead and render it there you go it's like light it's a bit lighter a little bit softer and again you can bring that you can bring the res resolution down to the us let's say um 512 again then the filter size to maybe three as i do it like i always do it this works for me you do that see it's a bit it, it's a more realistic shadow you know it's a more realistic so it's a, a faded a little bit that's perfect so um that's how you can do whatever you want to do that's how you can do your work all right so um so again we've covered that we've covered that the other thing that you guys should know is let's take it up take it up is you can add fog to your light effect all right you can add fog to make your light a foggy light like fog but it's actually you're working with light you can add 
your fog, uh, you you light effect. You can act your you can, can't even get it right. You can add um, fog to your light so that whatever light it is, it's like fog. It's light, but it's fog. I we'll, we'll get to that later, but I just want you guys to know you can do that. And if you if you want, you might as well do that. But you you can apply the file in there. You have to apply the file, the fog file. So that's how this thing works. And the other one last bit is the spotlight attributes. All right. And again, let's just render this. I just I, I like I like rendering, guys. All right. Right clicks. Not, you can left click if you want, but this the attributes will go. Just right click it and render it, to, so that you can render it, but your attributes will still remain there. So render it. That you can also change color with the, with your light. You can change your light color. Okay. You can change your light color and just render it. Yeah, that's some that looks a bit weird, but yeah, I just want you guys to know it's there. And you can also change the intensity. You can ramp up the intensity or lower the intensity. It's up to you. So again, play around with that. It, it works for my software and mentor my software, my hardware or mentor. So yeah, it's up to you guys.